Welcome to our program on Kardec Radio. Hello, everybody. Good to see you. We are back. And today we do have a special guest, our dear friend Samantha. Samantha is it's, uh, it's a worker and speaker here in the, the, the Spiritual Society of Ireland. And today she's joined us to put some kind of control in myself and Wanderlei. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, we need, we need to be controlled, isn't it, Wanderlei? We need. Well, we'll about. see at the end if I'm going to control you guys or if it's going to be three yeah. uncontrolled people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, so first of all, hey, hi, everybody. Hi, our Irish friends, workers from SSI, our Brazilian friends, Danny, our American friends. Like, hello, Don. Good to see you. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And today we will talk about resilience. So uh, it's an interesting topic. And we think we need to, to apply this because as of today, Ireland is in lockdown for the next six weeks. So people here in Ireland must have resilience in order for you for yourself and for and towards the others as well so but before we start uh we would like to ask if samantha as a as a guest can do our initial prayer sure thank you Sa. so let's raise our thoughts to jesus Close your eyes if you would like to. Breathe. Dear God, dear Jesus, dear spiritual friends and all our mentors, thank you so much for the opportunity to be here tonight. Thank you so much for being alive, even though we are living in these uncertain times. We thank you for having the opportunity to practice your loss during those difficult times. Thank you so much for everything that you teach us every single day is true, the situations that you put us through or even through some inspirations or even conversation with friends. Help us tonight to open our hearts and our minds to everything that you want us to learn. Be with us all along and so be it. Good, good. So, Resilience. Let's have some thoughts about it. And Wanderlei, I think you agree with me. Let's the ladies go first. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, I think a good way to start would be to try and make sure that everyone is, is on the same page uh, in terms of um, Resilience, I'm not sure if it's resilience or resilience, so I'll say resilience. Um, but um, so the idea is just make sure that we all understand what it is. Um, I believe that we all know what resilience is. But anyway, just make sure everyone is on the same page. I searched the dictionary and what in the what the dictionary explains. Um, about resilience is basically two things, or are basically two things. For, the first one is the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties. And the other one is the ability of, um, of a, the ability of a substance or an object to spring back into shape. So this is called elasticity. And an example of resilience 
is um, an elastic being stretched like this one here. So it's basically this. So it's being stretched and this material, it has the ability to go back to its initial um, size and form and everything. So it has the ability to stretch and return to its normal size after being let go. In other words, um, it is the ability to cope when things go wrong. And I also searched the, the web as well a little bit just to see what's in there. And I found some descriptions um, that are, for example, bouncing back after difficult times, dealing with challenges, and, and still holding your head up. So this is, a, this is an interesting one, dealing, dealing with challenges and still holding your head up, giving things a go, trying your best, being strong on the inside. And this is a very good one, being strong on the inside. This is really important so you can be resilient. You, know, you need to have the, the mindset um, and also the, the good, a good state um so you can be strong inside also being able to cope with what life throws at you and shrug it off and um, standing up for yourself getting back into shape after you have been bent or stretched like the elastic um, and i believe that spiritism has some tools that help us deal with being resilient some of them are prayer uh, also, I believe the gospel at home helps a lot. Um, faith, faith is really, really important. Resignation as well. Understanding the law of evolution is one of the things that we can do as a spiritist, and it also helps. Um, the immortality of the soul as well. So in, the, in the understanding that we are immortal beings, and it's last in my list here, but it's not the least important, which is kindness. And kindness is really, really interesting because it puts you in a different position. So when you do kindness, you basically um, take your it, it you take yourself from the focus and you focus on something else so it is good because then you stop thinking about your problems but you also help other people and you put your problems um in a, in perspective as well so those are some of the things though they are not uh, all the things but they are some of the things and i would like to ask you guys to comment on on those things if you have um, anything to add and maybe on the if you want to add something um or maybe even explain or explore a little bit more those things that i just um true kind of true in the air here and just before yeah. i say something when i is resilience not resilience as i said so okay so the query is there, resilience Okay, sorry. Okay, no, Samat, I'm no. not going to be able to explain uh, uh, nice as you did, and also with all this knowledge that you have. You know that, because I'm going to use my simple words. But I really like the example that you gave with the last, because that's us every day. You go, you come to Ireland, let's say if you are Brazilian, okay? or it could be any from any nationality, but you come to Dublin to study English, for example. Uh, you come, let's say, from a hot uh, place, a hot country, and then you have to deal with the weather, you have to deal with the language, you have to deal with all the culture aspects, different foods. And a lot of us in the beginning, we start to, to crack down inside of ourselves. We start to lose the hope, and we think that's never gonna pass. But I love the example that you gave of the last, because once you understand that that will pass, or once you kind of, if you say to yourself, okay, I chose to be here, that was my decision, okay, I'm gonna keep going. You are like this elastic. You're gonna be a stretching, 
but you're not you're not gonna break. You're like a bamboo. You are shaking, but you're not breaking with the wind. And that this more you do, I guess, uh, more you really start to to understand that uh, we are um, we have a certain power in ourselves. When I mean power, I mean we have our we have to also to to comprehend uh, the qualities that we have, you know, in order to be able to keep doing, to keep stretching and coming back, even uh, at the hard conditions. And I really think that uh, you, you explained quite well, but I'd say doubling for us, for most of us foreigners, is this, is a challenge. First, we have to accept the place and not be complaining, because some people just come here and complain. Second, you really have to put down yourself. You have to be resilient because most of the time, uh, let's say using the word, you're going to receive punches of life or of the situation. But you know, if you have your mindset, if you understand, especially if you have the, the tools which Spirit uh, gives to us, you know you're going to be able to pass that. And if you didn't pass, maybe that hasn't finished yet. Or maybe if you have to be in that situation, you know it's for yourself to improve. But for sure, that will pass. And I really think uh, that resilience that we are, talk we are talk trying to talk here is the key to be in Dublin, could be in America, could be in Asia, whatever. Especially in this moment where we are very overwhelmed by the situation with COVID and, uh, you know, and everything. Uh, so I think, uh, we have to try to really, um, don't, to don't lose control of ourselves. Otherwise, some people, they might go to a different direction, suicide or depression, or some people, they start to, um, really give, uh, more voice to their vices. What do you think, Stephen? Okay. Uh... I think that is a, a, a correlation when we're talking about resilience and faith. It's very well connected and uh, I give you I give you an example like uh, every time when we think about faith, we we start to think about religion. I'm not talking about this type of faith. Okay? I'm talking about the faith, the faith in ability that you can do something. In faith in ability that you can trust in yourself. Faith in ability that you, you know yourself. So you are not relying on someone else but you rely on yourself. So you're saying, okay, now it's me and me, and I need to overcome this. Yeah. Okay, this type of faith I'm talking about here. Okay, is the same faith that, uh, let's bring this, it's a, it's a religious moment, but it's very well known. Uh, so we know like uh, Peter, the apostle Peter, uh, he wants to walk through the, in the waters with Jesus. He 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 he, uh, he denied Jesus for a three for three times, uh, and so and always Jesus said, "Oh, you are men of uh, less faith or, or small faith." But at the end, when he understood that. Faith is not something he can acquire from someone. It's not something that you can, oh, give me one kilo of faith or uh, let me follow your examples. When he learned that faith is a trust, is a, a true belief, he cured the beggar. At the front of the, the at the start of the church, and say, "I don't have nothing, but what I have, I give you. Stand up and walk, raise and walk." So he gave that certain that that true in, in inside of him. This is not connected with religion, guys. 
I'm saying here, this is connect with, I do believe, when, when you say, I will get it, I will, I will have this done today, no matter at cost. And when you are, when you have, uh, when you're, uh, when you have resilience, you need to stick with the rules, but at the same time and say, let's take an example of our lockdown. Okay, it, we are at home and we need to overcome. There is no other way. So options we have, oh, I get crazy, like Vanderlei said, uh, increase our anxiety, uh, 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 perhaps having uh, anxiety, Drinking um, more. Drinking more, exactly. Yeah. Eat a lot, get fat. No. Uh, or start to think about nonsense things. Don't do anything. Start to, start to think about nonsense things. Instead of saying, hey, I'm here. This, what we happen, will pass. I know. Like every other moment. We have moments of happiness, we have moments of sadness, we have moments we are rich, we have moments we are poor, we have moments we are we are uh, in love, we have moments we are not in love. So everything pass and say, no, this is going to pass. And this is what we're going to do. Like, Bodele, you, like me, were in the army. So when we are in front of, i never been there, but when we are in a battlefield, you have just two options, live or die. Yeah, that's it. That's only two options you have. And if you allow fear overcomes you, you're going to die. True. Yeah. So I'm saying something crazy here or... No, I think I agree with you, Stephen. Like, uh, of course, uh, we have to understand that uh, we always gonna have fear. Samantha, uh, she studied psychology. She can say uh, even better than I, with more knowledge than I than I have. But we always gonna have fear, always in life. Yeah. But yeah, no, no, what no, we fear, do fear. with our fear? Yeah. We allow our fear to stop us, or we say, okay, like a uh, uh, just like even a selfish example, stupid example. But for me, it works quite a lot. I almost died in the sea, so I start to I, I start to be quite afraid for so many many years of uh, sea and water. But when I came to Europe, I said, okay, here I'm gonna learn how to swim. And like um, every time I go to Malta, I try to swim uh, further and further. And Samantha knows Malta a bit. Uh, I was in a island there called Mino Island, and I crossed it until Valletta. Guys, it's quite far. And when I did that, I was really afraid, but 100% afraid. So I was praying all the time. I was just talking to myself, talk to God, said, please, my friend, please, my friend, allow me to go there. Once I'm there on the other side, I'm going to take a break and then I come back. But just allow me to go. But I had the fear, but I had the desire also of doing that. So sometimes we have the desire to do uh, certain things. Not stupid things as I did, of course, but good things in life. But this fear stops us. So fear is not the problem here. The problem is how we are dealing with the fear. What do you think, Samantha? Yeah, no, I agree. I, I agree 100% um, about what you're saying. And it's really interesting what you both talked about. I was just thinking about too many things here, but... Um, like you said, Stephen, it's it's faith in yourself, right? But um, I think that one of the things that spiritism has, and this is, this, I'm talking basically for myself, um, but spiritism helped me a lot from, especially from the beginning of last year. Um, I passed through difficult times um, in 2018, from and then it was a very really hard year and especially in 2019 what i tried to do was to find some answers and to find some coping mechanisms for what i was um experiencing then i just 
dove in, in spiritism and I learned so much and I'm still learning a lot and I think it helped me really, really, really um, a lot. So it is faith in yourself, but once you study and once you understand um, the laws of spiritism, and if you believe it, of course, you know, it's not, there's some, there's an element of willingness here as well. So you need to want to do it. It's not like a friend telling you, go to the spiritual center and everything will be mm -hmm. fine. It's not like that. You need to want to do it. And it's the same with the fear, as Vandele was saying. You need to want to do it, and you have the power to do it. Um, it's proven through science how powerful we, we are in terms of our thoughts or even our, our actions. We are very powerful. We have created so many things. Look at how much we simply evolved during all those years. Um, and if you think about how things were when you were um, maybe 10 years ago or maybe 20 years ago, 20 years ago, there was no phone. There was no, like my teenage days, there was no messaging through, well, there was, uh, from some point, um, telephone was something that we had the, uh, the ability to, to have and to, to enjoy. But things are completely different for, for teenagers now that it was during my time. And it was like just five years ago. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Some years ago, right? And um, and things evolve so much. And we evolve as well. So I think there's this element of willingness. You need to want to do it, first of all. And the second um, thing as well is you can do as I said, you, you're very powerful. You can do so many things. If you believe you can do it, you do it. Now, you need to choose if you want to do good or to do bad because you can do both, right? Mm -hmm. So if you want to do good and you believe in yourself and you have the structure, because basically for me, spirit is a framework with all the tools. And as you said, Stephen, um, faith is really important. It's not exactly faith in God, but that as well. And for me, it, it's an assurance that whatever I'm passing, whatever I'm going through, everything will be fine because he's with me. And this, this type of faith, this shapes your future so much because you go to a situation with a different approach. As Vandali was saying. Yeah, we lost her. Yeah. Seems, yeah. Yeah, we lost her. Let's have faith that he, <laughs> her internet will come back. So like, like, like Hobby Brown saying here. Not Can you guys do now yeah, can you guys still hear me? Back. You're back. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, what part did I leave? And what I part think did I leave? Just said what I was saying. What Vanderlei was saying. Yeah. So Vanderlei was saying about um, the what he wanted to do. So he had this. He he understood the challenges. He was not downplaying it. He he knew that there was some challenge, but he also knew that he could do it and he believed in it. And he used prayer as a tool for him to cross. So that, that's what I think. I think for me, especially spiritism is really, um, it's a framework of how, and it, I'm, I'm, I'm always impressed by how much spiritism is um, together with science. Like when you would saying that it's the faith, it's the faith in ourselves and what we can do, how we are going to cope and be resilient with things. So, for example, um, there was this article that I was reading the other day, and they were saying that during these difficult times, or even during lockdown, there are a lot of things that you can't do. So you can't visit your friends. A lot of shops will be closed. So there are all of those things, but there are a lot of things that you can do as well. So in terms of getting your health, your mind in, in, in a certain type of um, health um, state or healthy state, 
um, you could focus on things that you can do, right? So you, you can change your routine and try and do things that you can do instead of focus on things that you can't do. So mm -hmm. this is one of the things, and I was reading the, the gospel according to spiritism about it as well. Um, today, um, chapter 20, and it talks about when you focus on doing things that you can do. So basically, one of the powerful things that you can do is kindness, um, as I mentioned before. So helping in having those difficult times. So in the, in the, in the gospel, um, it was written about um, having these difficult times to help us evolve and to make Earth a better place. So in summary, that would be it. And then one of the things that we can do um, to go through this process is to do kindness and help others. Because one of the laws is you the the, the cause and um, cause and effect. So you do things for others, and like or, or or for example, you don't do things for other, and you want th those things to be um, done for yourself. So how can you expect things to be done for yourself if you don't do for others? <laughs> um, so ba basically, focus on those things, and. I'm not saying that this is easy. It's not. I work a lot with myself every single day, trying to watch my thoughts and trying to evaluate my actions all the time. But um, but basically, yeah. those are the things that I that I kind of wanted to comment on what you guys said. Yeah, like please, guys. Let us let us know what you think about. If you're saying we are talking here nonsense, please let us know what you think. Let's let's have this uh, a conversation like Robbie Brown saying here. Not comes for free, but put it put in the effort to begin to see result, results. Also, we lean on our faith and intentions to do the good. Yes, yes. Uh, if we summarize everything, let's do a summary of what we said today. We can say faith it's get is to know our limits and at the same time our action capacity. So we know our limits. And I know what I'm capable of. Okay? So, once we know this, we can do extraordinary things. Because, you know, okay, I can go up to here. From this point beyond, I need to work more time with me, it's not a stoppable point. It's not like a wall you cannot overcome. I'm saying is you know that limit and you need to work more things inside of you in order to get in a bit further. When you know this, this is such progress because you will not set goals, you will not set expectations that you know you cannot reach. No. And if you don't reach what you set, you're gonna get frustrated. If you get frustrated, you go down. You put yourself down. If you put yourself down, you gotta get it. Like we said, anxiety, suicide thoughts. You are the least person in the world, and so on, and so forth. So, getting to know your limit and what you are capable of doing something. Extraordinary because you will know yourself, and this is I don't recall what's the question in, 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 the, in, the, in the spirits book, but uh, uh, the, the, the card that asked what is the laws, uh, God's law, and he said it was in your conscious, no, but yeah. 
it is in our conscious. And once we recognize that my limits is different from underlay limits, which is different from uh, Samantha limits, we are fine. But what do we do? We, we put ourselves based on someone else's success. We just set our goals based, uh, we do like a benchmark. We always put something, oh, I wanted that. But perhaps you, you don't, no, it's not because you are uh, not smart. It's, it's, it's not related to this. It's related about capabilities, knowledge. Perhaps that person who, are, who you are mirroring, mirroring, they have more or less capabilities than you. So, and how to do achieve this is trying. That's the only way is trying. You need to try, set some goals, see how you, you deal with that. Start with easy tasks. And then you're gonna get this harder, harder and harder. Uh, I used to say, um, wh wh when, when you used to have like uh, the, the, the fraternal assistance here in Ireland, and people were complaining about life and all these things, uh, one of my advices was set some goals. So like here, you, those who are not from Ireland, uh, flying from Ireland to elsewhere here in Europe, we, thank God we have uh, a Ryanair. It's, it's, it's really cheap. Like we're talking about here, 20, 40 euros. So up to $50 to go somewhere. You can go to anywhere. And put some goals. Say, okay, I will work hard now. And I will buy this ticket in three months. I will go to, I don't know, Italy. Spend a weekend there. I'm not saying long weekend. Give a treat to yourself. Put, set these goals and do a kind of a compensation of this. Like another example. When you earn your salary, and you say, oh, I cannot make my savings. I cannot do savings. But pay yourself. Try to do this. When you get your salary, get a percentage of the salary and say, okay, I go, now I'm going to pay myself, my efforts to do the job I have done. So, and put this aside. First thing, don't let, don't leave these. Okay, if, 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 if it allows at the end of the month, I, I will save this. No. Put it at the beginning, day one. Put this, put aside. And you say, I don't know, when I when I raise like, I don't know, five hundred dollars, I go to five hundred euros, I go to this, I go to there. But put small limits. Uh hobby saying again here, we have many resources available to us. It's up to us to put them into practice and to be kind to ourselves as we begin to process of inner transformation. Yes, Robbie, yes. There are plenty of resources, many of resources. Here we're just giving some examples. Here we're just yeah. giving some kind of ways to help you to find out uh, what you're going to do but at the end, it's you. That's what people didn't realize because at the end it's you. Even though you're a relationship with wife, husband, partners, kids, no kids, it's you. When you go to bed at night and put your head in your pillow, it's only you. Yeah. I love what Robbie said because 
um, he mentioned the resources um, and we have a lot of resources available to us again and I talked about the willingness to learn learn about those resources and would want to do and put them in practice as well but he also said that we need to be kind to ourselves as we begin the process of inner transformation and this is really interesting because a process of inner transformation is not i can say is not easy and um, because you're going to confront so many ideas ideas that you had before and maybe you're replacing with with new ones um you're leaving behind so much stuff you're leaving behind maybe situations that doesn't um fit with the new you that you want to be so you have all those, those resources and those those things help you but the situations that you're going to pass though those are those are challenging and you need to be kind to yourself because sometimes you'll be able to do it and sometimes you won't and mm -hmm. that's that's fine it's part of the process but if you are very hard on yourself maybe you're not going to overcome um the, the challenge that you set to yourself. So being kind to yourself is really good. And one of the things that I think helps is being, um, have some lightness with it, with it. So mm -hmm. try and when something happens, try to make fun of it or, or try to have some enjoyment with the situation. Um, so this is something that happened to me. I, I that was something that I wanted to do differently. And when I tried and I did the same thing again, that that specific situation was really interesting because I was going so well, doing a lot of time, and then at the end I did something that was bad, and then I was like, I I don't believe that. At the very last minute. <laughs> 10 minutes for the end for the for the game to end and then you lost the the penalty or whatever you know something like this so i was just trying to joke and like make some jokes with myself of course those were all in my head but this is probably one of the examples of being kind to yourself and it's it's not easy because at the end you, you you didn't accomplish what you wanted to accomplish but at the same time you understand um, what you try to do. You have a different mindset now. It's different knowing than doing. Those are completely different things. You can know a lot of things and do completely different things when you act. But I 100% agree with Robbie that we need to be kind to ourselves during those moments and, and during this process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Don saying here, how would we know when we've reached a personal limit, intellectual, emotional, or physical limits? Are these signs we experience when we reach a personal limit? Not sure my question is expressed clearly. Yes, Don, I, I, I understood what you were saying here, I think. Uh, let, let's do the example of the, 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 the last, at the beginning. Like if if you stress the, the last too much, they're gonna break. Okay, so this is a known limit. Okay, what are you gonna do? You just release the pressure on this elastic. So you need to do this with yourself, intellectually, emotionally, and physically. And the only way to know your limit is going through situations. Yeah. Okay. If you feel emotional balance with someone, something, so perhaps that should be your limit. You slow down. Like exercise, like my friend Vanderlei, he likes to put a lot of weights. So he knows that five kilos more will cost him a lot. Five months to stop it. <laughs> That's yeah, the moment. If you hurt yourself, you stay exactly. injured for five months, yeah. 
Exactly. And I think this word is amazing. If you hurt yourself, and probably yeah. this is how you can measure that you yeah, are getting exactly. to your limit. If this is painful, then that's your limit. That's to hurt. If it's causing you pain oh. or if it's causing you stress, you know, a lot of times we want to do so much. We want to do more than, and it's it's interesting how this pandemic is showing us that we need to slow down a little bit. So we, we have so many goals and we want to do so much in so little time and we get we get stressed a lot because it's just too much you know so for that's how i try to do it and i believe that if it doesn't feel right to you or if it's causing you pain that's your limit it's certainly your limit and if What's you're not so also not respecting other people as well so if you feel that something that you did cause pain to other people or put them in an uncomfortable position then you can review that as well so there's this limit within yourself and this is this limit of your space in the world as well so those are probably the way those are the things that i would watch But just one comment from what you said, Samantha. I really think it's, I really think it's nice when you said, if it causes pain, yes, maybe it's not really good for yourself. But I like more when you say it doesn't feel right. Because sometimes, once you want to reach some goal, I'm talking about, of course, I'm not here to judge. Everyone has different goals. But to reach our goals, we're going to have to put ourselves uh, with certain pressure and uh, equally to certain pain. Okay, so if you want to get, let's say, doesn't matter if, let's say, P. Stevens' goals is to be the CEO of uh, Google, whatever, uh, he's going to have to go through certain pain at some stage to reach to that goal. But I like when you said it doesn't feel right because sometimes you're going to feel pain, but it's still feeling right inside of yourself. Yeah. Let's say for an yeah. athlete, the athlete yeah. feels pain, feels a lot of pain once he's training, but he knows okay this pain will pass and the goal is bigger he feels right inside of himself yeah. so of course uh once uh if you have to explain to don we cannot really give you here a, a, a recipe a cake recipe for what he is asking us yeah. each one has a different uh limit and way of seeing these limits but i agree with samantha if it doesn't feel right pain i disagree a little bit but I understand what samantha said But because uh, I believe for all of us, if you want to go and reach certain goals, we're going to have to go through pain, you know, eventually in life. Yeah, maybe maybe I should have said pain in a bad way. Yes, of I course. Sorry. This, the, the, pain, the pain that, for example, make you awake at night, you know, those mm -hmm. things that are really not, not doing good for yourself. Um, And it's, as you said, it's personal. Each one will kind of find their own way. And this is the beauty of life because we are all unique. We are all different. As um, Stephen said, we all have our um, limits and our capabilities are different from each other. It doesn't mean that we are better than anyone else. We are just different and we need to understand how unique we are and what is that works for you it doesn't doesn't work for you yeah and this so, across what danny said the first goal to achieve is being kind to ourselves yeah yeah exactly yeah which sometimes is very difficult because we treat emmanuel says in a beautiful message that we treat everyone nicely we give everything to everyone we we try to help as much as we can the others but once come to ourselves we don't really forgive ourselves we don't care about our physical being we don't care about our mental being because we have this mindset which we always say everything's for the other no spiritism says yeah doing things to the other to the others it's really really important but as we always say here How can you do something for the other if you are not good for yourself? Doesn't make sense, you mm -hmm. know? That's something that we have to bear in mind, you know? We have to help the others, but we have to be strong with ourselves yeah. first. 
Don't say I like that, but call exams always kept me awake the night before. Yes, Dom, it, it, it's, again, it's, it's something like this. Okay, I do have exam tomorrow. Did I study? If the answer yes. Okay, but I have exam tomorrow. I didn't study. I need reach B or C to, 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 to go any further. Why are you not yeah. sleeping at night? Because I didn't study. You know what I mean? So. But maybe what Dawn is saying is something that happens to me all the time. When I have something or when I'm going to pass through a situation where I'm going to be analyzed or, you know, like, for example, if I have to do um, a car um, test, something like this. Those are situations that <laughs> even when I'm prepared, I can't sleep the night before because I get really anxious with those things. And that's just myself. So maybe Don is saying something like this, you know, even even when you are very prepared, the situation is ca causes you um, a little bit of anxiety. Um, and that's, that is natural in the sense that we have we have those things, we have those feelings and, 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 and it happens and it's like fear, as Vandalay said, it's something that we we experience, but we need to understand how to deal with it. But I, I guess what I was trying to say in terms of uh, being awake at night is not just one night before, it's like every single night. And people who have insomnia, they uh, they know what I'm talking about because they have something that prevents them from sleep every single day. And a lot of times it's anxiety. It's a lot of things that they, it's not the anxiety of any specific situation. It's, it's an anxiety that is um, much more than that. You don't even sometimes realize that you have it or you don't even know where it, com where it's, where it comes from. Um, but I, I think that I'm going to give you an example uh, and that maybe put some clarity on what I was trying to say. So when I said we try to do many, many, many things, uh, there was a time in my life that I wanted to be um, a good wife. I wanted to be a very good worker. I wanted to participate in the spiritual center. I wanted to go to the gym. I wanted to meditate. I wanted, I wanted to do so many things, so many things. And for the most part, I did well um, in all of them, but it was causing me so much stress, so much stress. I couldn't sleep. And, and this is where your limit lies, you know. It is good that you're doing all of those things, but at what cost? And this is just my personal experience, just to exemplify what I was trying to say. So maybe the limit is when, as, as I said before, and um, Vandele even commented, is when you understand that it doesn't feel right, you know, this is mm -hmm. causing you a lot of trouble. Do you really need to do that? And then that's the, that's the time when you need to stop and think, does it worth it? Is it worth it? You know, and I didn't even have time to talk to my parents. I'm living here in Ireland and they were in Brazil. Every time I was talking to them, I was doing something else because I couldn't be like this, just in the moment with them, you know, focusing, focusing on them. Um, so it was maybe ironing, I was doing other things or, you know, doing my nails, doing other things because I had so much to do. I thought I can't spend time, spend time just talking with them. And now this is one of the moments that I enjoy the most. You know, I want to be with them and just be with them and not do anything else. And yeah. if it's a waste of time, it doesn't matter. That is what I want to do. Yeah. So just trying to explain what I was trying to say using it, an example. It is exactly what Dani is saying here. Uh, she worked one, one year and three months nonstop, no Saturday, no Sunday. Uh, to pay her master degree, and she did. Now she can put a focus in her studies. That's it. No, uh, 
also don said here workaholics give up family and friends to achieve their goals like google ceo uh for vandele yes but le let's look like the, the 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 former ceo from apple uh what's his name uh, steve jobs steve jobs he passed away at the, at, at the, i'd say at, at the toppest moment of his life he discovered he had cancer and i don't know how long time he he passed away. So it is worth it. Also, uh, Rob is saying, walking the spiritual path takes strength and help us develop, understand to guide others. I agree with you, Robbie, but at, this, at the moment when you walking the spiritual path in a very good way, in the way it should be, you become an example. So you need to guide anybody. You're going to be an example. Yeah. You're going to be a light. Exactly. Yeah, that's it. You don't exactly. have to say anything. Your actions will say by itself. Exactly. Yeah. And is, is in the Spirit's book, like you recognize a spiritist from the, with, from the efforts he makes to turn, turn himself in a good person. So if you are trying, I'm not saying you are achieving your goals. I'm not saying you are achieving everything you have put to you. But what I'm saying is you're working very hard. You set different goals. You're getting to know your limits. You're getting to know yourself. And people are seeing this. You become the light. And when you are the light, you don't need guide. Because you are the light. You know, so let's see more, what more we have here. Uh, Heraclito. Ah, Heraclio. <laughs> Heraclio. Heraclio. Let's, yeah, not, our friend. let's not be too hard on us. We are all doing great during these unprecedented times. And when this is all over, we will see the legacy of learning and self-help we, we accomplished. 100% agree, Heraclio. 100% agree with you. Yes, we learn. We learn from this. It's 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 all true. Uh, when is our sacrifice and expiation? Maybe for lifetime spent in illnesses. Well, it's going to be an expiation. If you are hurt, let's go back to the hurting example. If you are hurting yourself and you feel pleasure to hurt you. So you need, you need to... The only way is, okay, I'm going this further here. Is this pain worth and the answer is yes, and you try, but you keep hurting yourself, and you try, you keep hurting yourself, it's time to give a step back and rethink your strategy. But if you keep insisting on this, it's like, for example, when you are in a marriage or in a relationship, and you're saying you love that person, but at the end, you know that person doesn't love you like you love them. And that person is not happy. But you want to keep that person with you because you love her or you love him. Until the moment you see that person is not okay. And you know that the right thing to do is set that person free but you don't let her go or him go. You keep in attaching yourself. So this is a kind of expiation. This is something you need to, and my girl's here is... I can hear. Themselves. I heard. <laughs> you heard that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, and you, you, you need to know because when you love someone is 
when you truly love someone, you love that person if that person is with or without you. Oh, it's fun there. So that, that's the main point we need to, to, to understand. Sometimes we need things that go. Uh, Dan is saying here, by the way, guys, I have to leave now because my nephew, web birthday, He's turning seven, old in Brazil. Thank you, see you, son. Thank you for your participation. Well, Danny, we have birthday to your nephew. And no, okay, Stephen, well, you got there. Step back and re, re reevaluate the situation. Yeah, always this. It's always this. Always we need to reevaluate. And like Wanderlei said. I'm suffering, but this suffering is justified. Yes. Go. And that's it. Okay. So, Wanderlei, you're gone. Okay. He's gone. Yeah. Yeah. He's gone. 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 He's gone completely. <laughs> yeah. Gone. See? Yeah. Yeah. Don says here, am I suffering or I'm just struggling? That's a very good question, Don. When you evaluate yourself, you need to ask, especially these two questions, I am suffering? Or I'm just struggling. Because when you are struggling, you find out resources to move on. When you are suffering, you will feel loss, loss of energy, loss of hope, loss of a lot of things. No, so perfect. I, li I like these two questions you put here. It's very valid questions. Don, use the right words to explain everything that we said here. Exactly. In in one sentence, he explained everything that we tried <laughs> for one hour. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Thank you, Don. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, this is. So, uh, I love how participative you guys were today. It's really good because it's. It is, um, it's good to see the ideas as well and see how people um, frame, how, how people frame differently the same things and, you know, it contributes to, to us as well because it's basically a conversation, right, Stephen? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, and uh, our, our time is, is up now. Uh, no, guys, you you put in the comments and you did yeah. this. You, you summarize yeah. everything, so you guys really on our on our road to the excellent discussion. Yeah, and uh, exactly. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you, especially you, Samantha, for your time here. Uh, yeah. Andre just texted it's me. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, he 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 has a uh, internet problems. So, Robbie. It's good. I learned so much by discussing with others. Thank you. We are saying thank you because we are learning a lot yeah. as well here. But yeah. uh, I, I would like to, to give a message, especially for our friends who are here in Lyon, Ireland with us. Tanya Moore, our volunteer at the, the Spiritism Society of Ireland, she sent a message and uh, it's a very good message. And I would like to finish our talk today with this message. And the title is, Not Everything is Cancelled. Sunshine is not cancelled. Spring is not cancelled. Love is not cancelled. Relationships are not cancelled. Reading is not cancelled. Naps are not cancelled. 
Devotion is not cancelled. Music is not cancelled. Dancing is not cancelled. Imagination is not cancelled. Kindness is not cancelled. Conversations are not cancelled. Hope is not cancelled. Guys, stay strong. Be safe. That's our desire, our, our wish for you all. Stay tuned with us. We're going to be here every Tuesday, every Thursday, on Sundays. Be brave. We will overcome it together. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. So, uh, Samantha. You do the you. final prayer. Yeah, no I do. Problem. Samantha, once again, thank you very much. Uh, I don't know. I'm thinking if I, we're going to bring Samantha back at some another time. So let us know if she needs to be with us here, if she passed the test. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. If yeah. I knew I was going to this test, I wouldn't sleep last night. Good, uh, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't say here. Thank you, Samantha. Nice to meet you. So, nice to meet great you too. To see you guys. Thank you for our discussion. Thank you, Kaka. I hope you are okay as well, Kaka. Be strong, my friend. Be strong. So, yeah, Samantha. Unfortunately, you need to come back again. You are a keeper. Yeah, Thanks, Don. Kaka. You're very kind. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. So, um let's let's raise up our thoughts again let's connect with our our mentors ask them to stay close to us giving us everything we need in order to to get to know more ourselves our limits have the conscious to know if we are struggling with some point of your suffering. May the superior spirits send to all humankind some love, some fraternity, and so hope in everyone's heart. So be it. Amen. Okay, so just let you know, guys, uh, on the November the 78th, we do have the Spiritism X. So if you want to know more detail about this event, you just need to go to spiritismx2020.eventbrite.co.uk. Uh, we will, we will uh, broadcast this in the Kardec Radio. Also in our Facebook, Spirit is an Island, Facebook and YouTube, we will broadcast this. So uh, a lot of uh, uh, institutions will support this event. So I hope to see you there. And once again, thank you very much. I see you next Tuesday. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Thank you, America. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Chicago. Thank you, my friends. Thank you, Kardec Radio. Bye-bye.